to episode 136 of the Postal Hub podcast. I'm Ian Kerr. Mark Fallon, president and CEO of the Berkshire Company, is back to talk about informed delivery from the US Postal Service. What is informed delivery exactly? Well, let's hear what USPS Postmaster General Megan Brennan has to say about it. One of our most important customer enhancements in mail is informed delivery, which provides users with a digital preview of their incoming mail. An informed delivery builds the anticipation of the mail throughout the day. It creates additional impressions of the mail piece and expands our touch point with customers. We'll hear more from Postmaster General Brennan later on, talking about the USPS's full year financial results. But first, Mark Fallon from the Berkshire Company discussing the latest innovations in informed delivery. Joining me on the line is Mark Fallon. Mark is President and CEO of the Berkshire Company. Mark, welcome back. We're going to talk about informed delivery, and we first spoke about this back in la ah, December 2017, episode 69. It was uh, back when informed delivery. I would say it was just starting out, but it had seven million subscribers, which is the size of some European countries. When I think about it, Mark, do you want to give us an update of what, how how informed delivery is tracking, and maybe also just remind us what informed delivery is. Hey, Ian, it's it's always great to speak with you again. Hard to believe it's been a year since we talked about it. So informed delivery is a program by the United States Postal Service where people sign up through their website and each morning get an email that has the scanned images of the letters that they're going to receive that day, plus the tracking numbers of any parcels or packages they're going to receive that day so they can track what's happening with that. It also allows mailers the opportunity through the Intelligent Mail Barcode Program in Mail.dat to include a color image of not necessarily the exact mail piece, but something that represents it, as well as a clickable link so that if I was sending you a solicitation for a donation on a postcard, I could also add an image that when you receive your email, you could click on it and it would bring you to our webpage to donate. The other interesting part of it, it also is available as an app. So when I'm traveling, I just open it up on my Droid and I can see what's coming. And if there's something important, I can call home and say, make sure you pull that out of the mailbox. It's something important to us. So that's the program. And since we talked last December, the Postal Service has almost doubled the number of informed delivery subscribers. There are now over 13 million people signed up, and that represents about 11 million households. So while that may be the size of a small country, it's about 10% of households in the U.S. and 5% of the adult population. Interestingly, the promotion efforts by the Postal Service have been, I think, somewhat limited. There's been promotion to mailers like at the National Postal Forum, Postal Customer Council events, webinars for mailers, and they also are using social media. So if you follow the Postal Service on Twitter or Facebook uh, or YouTube, they've had ads there promoting the service as well. Interestingly, some mailers have included messaging about informed delivery in the physical bills they send their customers. So this is proof that the mailers and the postal service are really understanding that messaging is never physical or digital. It's physical and digital. Well, you mentioned some of those promotions there, and I, I too have seen some videos promoting informed delivery. Um, they really are trying to push it out there, and it's, I, mean, I, th- I think it's impressive that they've reached, what was it, 13 million people of, of 11 million households, um, even while that might represent a small proportion of the US population. It's certainly a fairly big play, you know, a big sample to play with there. But let's just talk about the the focus on of the product. So 
from what I understand, the U.S. Postal Service has changed its focus from from the recipient to the sender. So what what's that mean? So what this means is starting in September. So every September, the Postal Service has what's called Postal Customer Council Week. So these are group uh, mailer groups around the country. So they had a very large push starting during this week. Uh, promoting informed delivery for business mailers. And the motto is create once, connect everywhere. So that emphasis is to increase the ROI on sending physical mail, whether it's direct mail, which is the way most people still think of this service, but also transactional mail. So as we said, the mailers can create campaigns that supplement the scans with the URL. So for marketers, that means, you know, again, creating that website mentioned in the offer and transactional mailers, and this is the part I find interesting, can add a link to the account sign-on screen. So that would speed up payment processing. So if you've got the message, what's on message, the image that you get on in informed delivery, you right. if it's a bill, you could tap or click on the link and it will take you straight to the payment page effectively. So if you wanted to manage your bills immediately, wherever you are, you're going to be away for a few days. You get the bill, you say, I'm going to pay it now via my internet banking. Uh, you can just do that. Correct. And and one of the things that we have seen at the Berkshire Company as we track this, when you look at the the volume of bills that mailers send, so businesses send out bills, that's only decreasing by one to three percent a year. It's not it's not dropping off a cliff. What is decreasing rapidly is the number of people who are paying bills by mail. So I may get my telephone bill physically, but I pay it online. That's that's the the model that is emerging. So now I just speed up that whole process. I already know that my customer has an online account, they have their bank account attached to whatever service I'm providing. So if they click that link and pay, instead of me waiting two, three, or four weeks for them to pay me, I'm getting payment quicker. So of course that increases uh, cash on hand, that increases float, so I'm making more money. And I've still only created one mail piece to do that. And I imagine that the trustworthiness, or well, putting words into your mouth here, Mark, I should ask this as a question, is informed delivery more trustworthy than email? Because you could easily get these bills sent you via email. I could, I, get, I could get my credit card or electricity bill sent to me via email and click on a link to pay it automa- to pay it directly. So is it, what's the difference? The, the difference is that the postal service is seeing on a daily basis over 86% of people are either opening their email or opening their app. 86% every single day. We were discussing a new process with a client two weeks ago, and I had the C-level with me, including the chief marketing officer. And when I said 86%, she immediately stopped writing, looked at me, you know, I could tell by the opening of her eyes that she did not believe me. And I, of course, had had the documentation with me to back it up. So yeah, 86%, I think that's more trustworthy, right, than email. Well, let's let's get back to the, the product itself, informed yep. delivery. You've said it's increased to 13 million, um, what was the figure? It was 13 million, wasn't it? 13 million people 13 have million signed people, up. 13 million people, right. Is, are, they, are the actual customers seeing value in it? I mean, you've just explained how the... Um, how mailers can see value in it, uh, recipients seeing value in it. The recipients in surveys the Postal Service run do see value. I believe the number is greater than 90% would recommend it to a friend or family member. So then from a mailer perspective, we've mentioned the open rates and things like that. Are there any other benefits that the mailers are getting out of informed delivery? Well, what's good is, again, with the focus now the Postal Service has on informed delivery for the business mailer is they have really stepped up the tools that are available. So as I said, it's about 10% of households. So is that a good 10% for me? Through the webpage that the Postal Service set up, mailers can look at the distribution of subscribers. 
So you can download an Excel spreadsheet. That's how I was able to tell you the 13 million number. You can download an Excel spreadsheet that breaks down the number of subscribers by the different areas that the Postal Service has set up, the districts within the areas, and then down to the three-digit or even five-digit zip codes. So if I'm a small business doing a mailing in Southboro, Massachusetts, I can go in and see how many subscribers there are and decide whether or not to add informed delivery. So that's just a few clicks, and I can see whether my prospects or my customers are informed delivery subscribers. And then I can decide with intelligence whether or not to use informed delivery. And then also when I'm measuring the impact of the campaign, Ian, I can see whether it worked. And what's really important to remember that at least right now, the Postal Service isn't charging mailers to participate. So a mailer can use the same artwork they use to create the physical piece to create the image that's used with the ID. And then they can create a separate landing page on their website to direct the recipients, or they can just track clicks through the Postal Service. So it's just a little bit of effort and no external costs, and you can significantly enhance the effectiveness of the campaign. Okay, so you just said campaign. Are you talking just about mailing, or do you want to elaborate that on a little bit? Uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Well, so to give you an answer you'd expect from a consultant, it's both non-committal and contradictory. So <laughs> a, camp- a campaign may be one mailing, or it can be part of the, an omni-channel effort to communicate with customers. So the only way in the past to link the digital was to have a URL printed on the mail piece or to have a QR code, which would then be scanned with the handheld device. Moving to informed deliverable, informed delivery, the click on the image provided by the mailers included in the notice. So it drives them right away to that site. And you're getting that notification every single day. And this moves it from the mail center and IT to marketing and the business units. And the Postal Service is testing right now, allowing mailers to use a personalized URL or a PERL for each individual. So that means when I upload the mail.dat, you would get a different URL than John Callen or, or somebody else. So that makes it even more personalized. That's in the test phase, but the last briefing I had sounds like it's going very well. So with one creation, the mailer is now getting two or three touches with the recipient. So now you can do analysis on that one mailing and on the entire campaign that you're using to communicate with customers. But is this making it more complex for mailers um, when they're already dealing with a campaign that might be print, social, broadcast, or mass media, whatever it might be? Are we are we making things more complicated, or you know what, what's your take on that? I don't think so. I think that first mailers are already smart mailers are already creating mail.dat. So they're already creating information files for every individual recipient, right? So that's already in play. Adding a field to that is not that complicated. And for smaller mailers, the Postal Service has created a portable that's accessible through the mailer's gateway. There is even an interactive video that explains how different participants, mail owners, marketing agents, mail service providers can take advantage of informed delivery. And so far, according to the published statistics, 95% of the companies are using the portal, which means I don't even have to hire a programmer to do this. I don't have to modify my mail.dat. And for the folks that are going the more complicated way through Postal One, remember, I I really need to reiterate, they already create mail.dat files. They already create job information files. This is just one additional field. So there's an easy-to-use portal, and if you've managed an address list, you can manage that as well. So we've seen the evolution of informed delivery to this point. What's next? 
So as part of the rate case, the Postal Service also announced their promotions for 2019. And the new promotion that's been getting buzzed was created for informed delivery. So for the period of September 1 through November 30th, 2019, the Postal Service is offering a 2% discount of postage for mailings that incorporate informed delivery campaigns as a component. So considering the rate case, the current rate case averaged about 2.5%, that really helps offset that postal increase. Uh, other ideas that are in test right now, linking informed delivery campaigns to mobile wallets, improved flats visibility. A, a big challenge today is that most flats aren't scanned. So I just get uh, in my informed delivery notice that there are pieces where we don't have images. So they are working on how do they improve that. They have package campaigns. So here's one I'm sure you would love, that when I get my notice about the package, there could be a link to a YouTube video explaining how to unpack it and then put it together. Well, I like that. As long as you're not receiving a drone in the mail, I'm all for it. <laughs> Actually, this is anti-drone, right? So you can look at it that way because it's YouTube. No drones allowed. And then... Two other ones. The first one is very exciting as a small business owner is the small business as receiver. Right now, informed delivery is limited to consumers, not businesses. So they are going to experiment with moving to small businesses first. And then an interactive campaign data distribution, which is the Postal Service is collecting data uh, on the clicks. But if you also remember through informed visibility, which is a totally different campaign, they can provide so much more analytics, and they are working with marketers and with businesses in the United States to determine what data that the Postal Service has would add value uh, to the company's analytics. And then the next really big rollout under the informed uh, moniker, for, for want of a better word, is informed address. This is only in beta, but it's something that's very exciting. So informed address would obscure my delivery address with the unique code. So I could share my email preferences with the postal service. Um, again, remember, I said that 82 to 86% open, and I could also say what I want physically. So let's say you have a blog. We'll call it the Postal Hub. Nope. Nope, I think I somebody say, wants I, th I think someone's taken that already. <laughs> yeah. But but on your blog, all you have is my email address. Yeah. But let's say you want to send a physical piece out with me to me. Uh, a lot of people say, why would I send a physical piece? Just this week, as I do every single month, I got a physical piece from a small company in California called Google. Yeah. They use they the mail use, a lot, don't they? Yeah. They use the mail probably more than any other internet company. And, but you don't have my physical address. You could send the email list to the postal service and they could create a fit. They could create a, what I'm going to call the informed address code for you to print on the mail pieces. So you still don't know my physical address, but you are able to send me a physical mail piece. And so does my, let's say um, this mysterious company in California wants to send me a mailing piece. They've got my email address. The U.S. Postal Service shields that information, yeah? So they're, they're not going to give Google my postal address in no. this instance. It's, it's, it, Google only knows that they've got the, those are my email address. They've sent that, those details to the Postal Service. The Postal Service then decodes that or puts a barcode on the letter, whatever it has to be, so it then gets sorted to the address, the destination address, yeah? Right. So I, I, would in, I would, in effect, have two intelligent mail barcodes assigned to me. One, which you have de you decoded, comes out, you know, if you have an IMB scanner, you'd scan it, and it would say 36 Gilmore Road, South Borough Mass, 01772-1721, right? However, with this other unique one that's assigned to me, it would just say 12345, and that's it. The Postal Service relates that to my physical address, but anybody else scanning it has no idea what it means. So that has potential beyond just direct mail, right? 
Oh, absolutely. Um, you could use it. Again, I'm getting a package, right? I'm ordering a package online and I'm not sure I trust you, right? I don't know whether or not you're a scammer. I don't know what you are. So I put in my postal service informed address. Postal service still gets it for, to me. And you as the shipper or potential fraud person never knows where I actually live. Well, this sounds like a really interesting development, this informed address. And I'm, look, I'm going to look forward to seeing how that evolves. Um, is it going to be like in limited? They said it's beta testing or beta testing, depending on what kind of. It's it's only in beta testing. Um, I I think I attended four different informed delivery briefings this September and October, and only heard about this once. So uh, it's definitely just there. A lot of lot of opportunities, a lot of challenges. So it'll be interesting to see because remember the driver at the end still doesn't have anything. So that's. With letters, that's actually very easy to do because it's mixed in the tray, but with flats and parcels, it's going to be a bit of a challenge. So like I said, this is a, this to me is one of the most exciting developments, and I look forward to seeing where it's going to go. Now, I want to ask you one more thing about informed delivery before we go on to something else. And you mentioned then about how this informed address could potentially protect consumers against some forms of scams or whatever it might be. I've read a little bit of press in recent months where people are claiming, people, residents in the USA, are claiming that they've been a victim of fraud because of informed delivery. Now, can you just give us a bit of an idea of what is really happening there? So in the cases that I have been able to find online, and remember the Postal Service will often try to quash these, uh, not for, for bad press, but they don't want to give people ideas on how to commit mail fraud. But on all of the ones I've seen so far, all of the victims have been people who their personal data has already been hacked somewhere else. So the two most recent reports that probably caught your attention online, both of those people were federal employees whose information had been hacked and then sold on on the black market. So their identities, their digital identities had already been stolen. When you sign up for informed delivery, you have to answer a set of questions like where you previously lived, parts of your social security number, and generally, you know, uh, I think I had a how much money was on my mortgage or something like that. So the postal uses a third party to verify that it's me. If somebody's already hacked in and has my digital profile, they can answer those questions. And once they answer those questions, they can see what's coming into my mailbox. If they have also signed me up for a credit card that they're using, they know when it's arriving in my mailbox. So they don't have to go to my mailbox every day and and collect the mail trying to find that bill. They can just look at it form delivery. And when they see that bill arriving, intercepted before I get home. So in other words, the person would have had, uh, they've already been the victim of uh, identity fraud before anything happens via informed delivery, more or less. Right. Right. And and so from what, again, there, there are no stats on it. This is a very new program. I have found very few folks that this has happened to. You know, what it comes down to is if your identity is ever stolen, you you enter into a very bad place with so many things. And what the Postal Service has done is if you if you if your identity has been stolen, you want to block your address. They have set up a, a place called eSafe at the Postal Service. So you can block your address just by sending an email to eSafe at USPS.gov. So you notify that team that you don't want anyone to be allowed to set up informed delivery, they can do that for you. I've been tracking the Inspector General of the uh, Postal Service, and they've audited informed visibility for security and access, but they haven't released any uh, reports on informed delivery. So I'm hoping that the Officer Inspector General will publish something within the next six months or so. Now, before we wrap up, there was recently an announcement by the Postal Service that they're going to hire 100,000 people 
for the holiday season. We've discussed previously on the podcast the sheer volumes of people, the people, you know, the companies like FedEx and UPS are hiring. 100,000 mark. It's a big number in a country with unemployment running at about 4%. Can it be done? <laughs> it's going to be a challenge. Um, when I was preparing for this podcast, I was actually at a mailers conference and had to, the chance to sit with the USPS human resources manager for one of the larger districts in the country. And she has to find and hire 900 of those, those uh, temporary employees. And her challenges first is our, one of our favorite people to talk about in the shipping world. There's a local Amazon warehouse and they're paying people $15 per hour. Uh, the Postal Service, because these are temporary employees or casual, as they're known in the industry, they can't offer any benefits or even the promise of a full-time permanent job after the holidays are over. They have to tell the workers they're going to be required to work nights and weekends. Remember, it's the Saturday and Sunday delivery that separates the Postal Service from the other carriers. So that's a, a really big part of this. Plus. All the candidates must pass a background and drug screening check. Now, in the States, the Postal Service can't ask when you're applying if you have a record. That's against the law in the States. However, after you finish the application, then they can run a background check. And that's been a challenge. And the drug screening check is a challenge for a variety of reasons, including that in many states in the U.S., uh, marijuana is legal either as a medical drug or as a recreational uh, drug. However, at the federal level, that is still against the law. So what was amazing, you know, she gave me all of those, this is what I have to overcome. She's completely confident she'll hit her number. She's begun both a print and an online campaign. She's also promoting it internally and asking postal employees for referrals. And Ian, as a fellow member of the International Order of the Children of Postal Workers, you know that family members have always been drafted during periods of, of high volume. So, so that's what we're called now, are we? The International Order of the Children of Postal Workers. That's what I've got so far. Um, I'm going to see May, the Postmaster General at the end of the month. She, I don't know if you know this, but Megan Brennan is also the daughter of a letter carrier. Right. So she she is one of us, Ian. <laughs> She's and, one of us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I'm going to ask her if she agrees with the with the title, and, and and we'll see if we can draft her perhaps as an honorary chair. So, but back to you know the the people that are doing the hiring. After listening to her positive approach, and this is a person I've known for several years. She was not just trying to be rah rah. She really believes she's going to hit these numbers. So I'm rooting for her. Uh, the Postal Service is the largest postal network in the world. It delivers a lot of mail and parcels that are going to be very important to people's holidays. So I think we all want them to be successful. Well, it's going to be a big challenge for them. Uh, and they're not the only postal operator in the world who needs to hire a whole load of casual workers this Christmas. We've seen Australia Post announced and Royal Mail, Posty in Finland. They're all looking at hiring extras for the busy Christmas peak, whatever we're allowed to call it at the, at the moment. Uh, so interesting times ahead, especially when it comes to that uh, 4% unemployment rate and the challenges that throws up. So good luck to them. Um, and Mark, Great to get that update on informed delivery as well. It's, it's, it's an interesting product. And I'm not, I mean, if there are any other countries out there who are offering something similar to informed delivery, please email me. Let me know. My email is ian at thepostalhub.com. I'd love to hear about it. I, the only thing I can think of that's similar is something like what Australia Post does. Australia Post has a product called Mail Today. That's Mail, the number two, day, Mail Today, which is where if you have a post office box, you get an email to let you know if there is something in your box. It doesn't tell you what's in your box. It could be you know, a catalog, it could be a letter, um, but this tells you that there's something in your box to be collected. But it's not available for residential delivery points. It's really only for those post office boxes. So uh, it's, it'll be in I'll be interested to hear if any other country has something even remotely like informed delivery. 
Mark, if people want to contact you to find out more about uh, informed delivery or, or any of these innovations from the U.S. Postal Service, how can they get a hold of you? Well, Ian, they can reach us. Uh, our website is berkshirecompany.com. Uh, email me at mmf at berkshire-company.com. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I think we're both connected. Um, or if they want to learn about the other side of our business, uh, they can contact me through markfallon.com. I'll stick Mark's contact details on thepostalhub.com as well, so you can get on there and find the link to his website, to his LinkedIn profile, and all of that. Mark Fallon, President and CEO of the Berkshire Company, thanks very much for joining us on the Postal Hub podcast today. Thanks, Ian. The U.S. Postal Service has announced its full-year financial results for fiscal year 2018. Revenue was up 1.5% to $70.6 billion, thanks largely to parcels. Parcel revenue was up 10.1%, and total mail volume was down 2.1%, while parcel volume was up 6.8%. Let's leave the figures at that and go straight to Postmaster General Megan Brennan for her take on this fall in letter volumes and the growth in the parcels business. No other shipper delivers as many e-commerce packages to the home. However, growth in our package business will not offset the continuing declines in our mail business. This past fiscal year, volume declined by 3.2 billion pieces. And this decline puts significant financial strain on the organization because mail products account for nearly 70% of our revenues. As is now customary, Postmaster General Brennan called upon U.S. regulators and legislators to act. The Congress and our regulator must make statutory and regulatory changes to our business model to return the Postal Service to financial stability. Without these changes, our financial results will continue to deteriorate and likely at an accelerating rate. Let's now look towards peak season. Here's Postmaster General Brennan talking about the U.S. Postal Service's preparations for the busiest time of year. We're forecasting that we will process and deliver 16 billion pieces of mail and packages between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We anticipate we'll deliver more than 900 million packages to American homes this holiday season, roughly a 5% growth over last year. We also anticipate that we'll deliver more than 8 million packages each Sunday between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Some great guests on the podcast in the coming weeks, including Matthew Galt, CEO and founder of e-commerce fulfillment company Fulfilio, Garrett Bridgman, Managing Director, Mails and Parcels at Unpost, and many more. Make sure you never miss an episode of the Postal Hub podcast. Sign up for the Postal Hub e-newsletter. It's a weekly email update with the latest podcast and any other items I've written during the week. Go to thepostalhub.com and sign up there. Now, if you're listening to this podcast through iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or Spotify, please do subscribe or follow the podcast. And if you're over there on iTunes, please do give the podcast a rating as well. If you're on LinkedIn, well, connect with me on LinkedIn. But as I say every week, please remember to send a little note just to say that you're a listener to the podcast. And that way I'll know that you're legitimate and not just some random person wanting to you know, sell me something or worse. So please do send that message when you send an invitation to connect on LinkedIn. And if you want to discuss anything at all with me, otherwise you want to suggest a topic for a future podcast, for example, well, drop me a line via email. Ian at thepostalhub.com is my email address. I'm Ian Kerr. Thanks for listening in. And I look forward to your company next time on the Postal Hub podcast.